Hi, welcome to Bearded Meeple. Today, we're going to take a look at a fantastic gateway game because one, it's very easy to learn, and for a casual gamer like myself, I'm not going to get too stressed over the decisions I need to make in the game, but I'm still going to enjoy the chance to screw over my opponents. It's for two to four players, ages 10 plus, and it'll play in about 40 minutes, although once you get a handle on it, you could probably easily do it in about 25. It's brought to us by Cosmos. It's Imatep. Let's take a look at it. In the game, players are moving stone from a quarry by boat to different locations for points. We have a large stone quarry, and each player will receive a sled tile on which they will collect their particular color of stone. We have three different decks of boat cards, depending on the number of players. There are seven cards in each deck, but you will only ever use six. Each boat will show you how many stones it can hold and how many stones are needed before that boat can launch to a location. We have the market, pyramids, temple, burial chamber, and obelisk. The market will play home to four different types of cards. There are statue cards, end of game scoring cards, immediate cards, and action cards. Let's take a look at what the tiles do, the setup, and the gameplay. As the boat sails and lands at the market, cards are selected based on placement from front to back. So brown would select, then white, then brown again, and then gray. Cards are not refilled until the end of the round. As a boat lands at the pyramids again from front to back, that player will score the associated points immediately, so white would score 3, brown would score 2. We also show the second level and the third level. Anything above the third level only earns you one point. As a boat lands at the temple, the stones are placed from left to right. Players will receive one point for each of their colors showing from above. Stones are placed in the burial chamber from left to right, top to bottom, and are scored at the end of the game. You will earn points for all your connected stones horizontally or vertically, not diagonally. So currently, white would earn 6 points for 3 connected stones, brown would earn 3 points for 2 connected stones. And on the last tile, you are simply building an obelisk in your color of stone. Points at game end are based on the number of players. And all the tiles are double sided for variable gameplay. We place the location tiles and set the market. We have the quarry and our scoreboard. We have three players, so we select the appropriate deck. Remember, we only use six of the seven cards. We flip the top card and we select the appropriate boat tiles. Depending on turn order, you will begin with certain amounts of stones on your sled. We're ready to begin. On your turn, you can do one of four possible actions. Get new stones. Place one stone on a ship. Sail one ship to a site. Or play a blue market card. When you get new stones, you can only ever take a maximum of three and add them to your sled. However, your sled can only ever hold five, so if you only have room for two, two is the maximum you can take. When you place a stone on a ship, you can place one stone on any ship that is not yet sailed and place the stone in any empty location. To sail a ship, there are two conditions. That ship must meet the requirements in order to sail, and it can only land at an open dock. The other thing you don't have to have a stone on there to sail a ship, and that's where you can really screw with your opponents, because you can see what they're going after, and let's say an opponent really wanted to place in the pyramid based on points that were coming up, and you might sail them to the obelisk instead. And your last option is to simply play a blue market card and take the appropriate action. And that's the game. Loading your sled, placing stones on boats, and getting those boats where you need to 
so you can obtain the most points at the end of six rounds and win. And that, my friends, is Imitep. Yes, it's easy to learn and it's light and casual, but it still offers you strategy and plenty of decision making. Don't fret too long over your decisions because remember, your opponents can move boats even if they're not on them. I also like the double-sided tiles for variable gameplay. I like it. I hope you get a chance to check it out. I'll talk to you again soon.